Hey everyone and welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be talking about what you need for a hamster before you actually go and get one. This is all the things that you're going to need for your hamster's cage, including the cage, including cage sizes, water bottles, everything you're going to need for your hamster. We're going to go through it all and talk about it and let you guys know what you need before you get a hamster or what you should actually have if you have a hamster just now. Before we get started though, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, hit the like button and share this video with friends and family that you think may like it. Without further ado, let's jump into the video. The first and main thing you're going to want to get for your hamster before you get a hamster, before you do anything, is you're going to want to find a big enough cage, and not just any cage will do. The recommended cage size for the US is 450 square inches, and for the UK it's 620 square inches. It is strongly recommended that you go by these sizes, because this will give your hamster enough living space to live happily. When you're looking for a cage for your hamster, you're looking for a cage that's got less height and more length. Hamsters don't need height, they don't climb very often, they're not climbing animals, they need a lot more length than they do height. So if you're going to invest in a cage that is high, try and invest in a cage that is longer instead. For the base of the cage, you're going to want to look for something that's got more than 6 inches at the base because you're going to want to put 6 inches of substrate here as this is recommended for hamsters to be able to burrow. Anything over 6 inches is great as well, if you can get something that's really really deep, such as a bin cage, you can add as much substrate into that as you can. You're going to need a well balanced food mix. I use this one here, this is Harry Hamster's food mix, I have stuck by this one for gears, I love this food mix, it comes with a variety of different nuts, seeds and um, other things that your hamster needs. I do actually add my own mealworms into this mix so that it gives the hamster a little bit more variety and a little bit more protein. Talking about proteins, you're going to want to do your research into hamster um, nutrition so that you can see what your hamster needs percentage wise for them to live happily and live healthily. So you can do this research, it will tell you what you need and you can learn this and then when you go out shopping you can look at the food mix ingredients, see what percentages is in the food mix and you can kind of gather that way what food would be best suited for your hamster. All this nutrition is very important because after all this is what your hamster has to live on and this is what keeps them happy and healthy throughout their lifetime. So a good balanced food mix is something that you're going to want to invest in. Moving on to food bowls for your hamster, you're going to want to find something that is big enough for your hamster to actually fit in because hamsters like to sit on top of their food while they're eating it and they get to forage through it and find out what they want to eat and um, find all the different bits of food in there so you're going to want to find something that is big enough for your hamster to actually fit in so something like this would be great because you can just spread the food out over the plate rather than this because your hamster won't be able to actually fit in there they'll just have to pick through the food and they don't really enjoy doing that so giving them a bigger plate or something that's big enough for them to sit in so dog bowls and cat bowls are usually quite good if you can find a cute one like that you can actually get hamster bowls that are big enough that they can fit in as well you just want to make sure that your hamster can actually fit inside this bowl comfortably and forage around about their food and do what they love to do best hamsters don't actually need food bowls but it's recommended that you give your hamster a food bowl when you first get them just to double check that they are still eating so if their food bowl empties you know that they're eating their food and you don't need to worry too much about that but once you've had your hamster for a little while, you can actually start scatter feeding them, which is better for their mental health because they can go foraging for that food and look for that food and actually gives them something to do as well while they're eating. So you're helping them do something that would be normal to them while you're actually feeding them. The only thing is with scatter feeding, you can't keep an eye out on the fact that if they're still eating their food because you're scattered the food all over the cage. So most people would recommend that you give your hamster a bowl constantly so that you can always keep an eye on their health and you can always keep an eye that they're still eating their food and they're still healthy. The only thing that I would say with scatter feeding is if you notice that your hamster's weight is starting to drop then you may want to start feeding them in a bowl so that you can see if their food is actually going away and they're eating it and then it's another issue or if they're not eating their food at all. Just remember you only need to feed your hamster one tablespoon of food a day this is enough to keep them going every single day. If you feed more than this it just sits in the bowl and then you have to put it in the bin and it's a waste of food. It will eventually dry out and go a bit stale as well. So giving them one tablespoon of food a day keeps them going and keeps them happy and they're not going to run out of food. I personally feed my hamsters this and then I'll leave them a day or two just to make sure they've got through that hoard of food and then I'll give them more food. If I feel like they're in their bowls and they're looking for food then I'll feed them then but I usually leave them for two days after I've fed them just to make sure they've got rid of all that excess food. If not they just start piling it up and then you find a big pile of it when you've emptied your cage out 
and it's all about other waste of food. Next, we're going to talk a little bit about water bottles and water bowls. Water bottles or water bowls are essential to hamsters because hamsters need water. I actually have a video on this and I will tag it up here so that you guys can go watch it. If you do opt to have a water bowl, you're going to want to have something like this that isn't too big in the inside that your hamster can fall in and it's quite shallow as well so that there's not too much water in it. You will want to clean your hamster's water bowl out thoroughly every single day just to make sure there's no algae growing in there and stuff like that, um, slime. Um, stale water and stuff like that so you want to clean this out every single day you will want to always check it as well just in case your hamster has accidentally run out of water or it's tipped its bowl over a hard ceramic dish should help it from stopping falling over and stopping it from emptying it out the only downsides to having water dishes is the fact that it can get filled with substrate and it can become quite dirty quite fast water bottles are designed to prevent this but it doesn't give the hamster a natural way of drinking it either but if your hamster doesn't like drinking from a bowl, then a small water bottle will do the trick. Most owners will use a water bottle because of convenience and because of this is the way that hamsters have been shown to the public as this is who you look after a hamster, here's a water bottle, it'll drink its water. Most hamsters will use a water bottle without any problems, but just remember you need to clean your water bottle out every single day as well. Let's move on to wheels. Wheels are important for stimulation and exercise for hamsters. You're going to want to go around about 10.5 to 12 inches for a Syrian hamster and you're going to want to go about 6.5 to 8 inches for a dwarf hamster. This just stops their backs from arching and stops them getting back pain and back problems. So if you do notice that your hamster is bending its back while it's trying to run on its wheel, you're going to want to upgrade your wheel to a bigger size. Wheels come in a various a range of designs and it's entirely up to yourself what one you decide to pick. Normally the old style design wheels are more preferred by hamsters because they're easier to run on rather than that of like the flying saucer but it's entirely up to you and your hamster's personality so you can figure that out yourself if you want to just go for an old style wheel but your hamster doesn't like it you could also try out a flying saucer down the line so it's entirely up to yourself what wheel design you decide to go for but just remember it needs to fit in with your hamster's comfort as well you will want to avoid any wheels that are barred or caged in the inside if you can only get one of these wheels there is DIYs out there that you can do to fill in the gaps because if your hamster falls through that and is running really fast it will break a leg. Sometimes I've heard of cases where the legs actually been ripped off because of the bars so you don't want to use these wheels because they are extremely dangerous and it can also cause bumblefoot on the palm of your hamster's paws. Let's talk a little bit now about toys and accessories. Hamsters need toys, they need stimulation, they love their brains to be active when they're out and about so having their cage full of different toys and different tunnels different things for them to do is great. So you can go wild here with the toys and the tunnels depending on how big your cage actually is. You can put as much as you want in. You just want to make sure you leave enough room for your hamster to actually be able to live in the cage as well. Bedding is what most people think is at the bottom of a hamster's cage. So this stuff here, the substrate in the bottom of the cage, this isn't actually true. The bedding is what your hamster is actually going to be sleeping in. So usually what the best thing to use for a hamster is shredded up tissue paper. So just grab tissue paper and just shred it up and put it in their nest and they'll use this as nesting material. Benefits of using this is if your hamster actually eats any of the toilet paper it will just dissolve up in their stomachs and go through the system and not cause any problems but also it's free. You have to buy it for yourself anyway so why not use it? So now we're going to talk about substrate which I mentioned just there and this is the stuff that goes on the bottom of the cage. This is the stuff that stops your hamster from smelling and catches all their pee and all their poo and lets them burrow in it as well. This is the fun stuff that your hamster really really loves. Depending on how big your cage is you're probably going to need a lot of substrate because for me this is about two bags, three bags of substrate just to fill this cage. It takes me about four to fill that one. So this stuff is usually quite cheap depending on what you go for. You do have a different range of styles, a different range of designs and stuff like that for bedding and colours and stuff like that. You just want to avoid pine and cedar wood shavings because these are really bad for your hamster's respiratory systems. You also will want to avoid any kind of cat litters apart from paper cat litters and wooden pellets. As far as bedding goes it's entirely up to you what you want to do with your bedding. You can split it, have sand. As long as your compost doesn't have any added extras into it, any extra fertilizers or anything like that, you can actually use compost for your hamster's cage as well if you want to go more natural design. It's entirely up to you what you do with your hamster's cage and bedding is where usually the imagination begins because you start with the layer of bedding and then you build your cage up from that. So whatever design you're planning on going for your cage, you're going to want to start with bedding anyway. But yeah, it's entirely up to you what you want to use and have fun with it. Anyway guys, that's all the information I had for you in this video. If you do have any more tips or tricks, do leave them down in the comment section. People will read them and it will help other people out. Before you go, please do subscribe because it really does help the channel and hit the like button as well. 
and I will see you all in the next video. Bye guys.